The Equitable Life Assurance Society presents This is Your FBI. This is Your FBI, the official broadcast from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, presented as a public service by the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community. Now that the new year is only four days away, once again we hear jokes about resolutions, turning over a new leaf. But deep down inside, there's not a one of us that doesn't seriously consider making some important improvement either in himself or in his relations with those near and dear to him. Probably that's why in January, so many fathers increase their family's protection with the Equitable Life Assurance Society. So, fathers, this year, why not make the finest New Year's resolution of all? Resolve now to give your family increased security through life insurance. Then keep that resolution by getting in touch with your Equitable Society representative tomorrow. Tonight's FBI file, Little Tough Guy. There are seasonal trends in every business, including crime. In summer, the majority of crimes are committed against people. Crimes like murder and felonious assault. In winter, however, the criminal turns his attention to crimes against property. Crimes like auto stealing, arson, and armed robbery. During the year of 1946, there were an unprecedented number of those crimes against property. It is important to the future of the country to know that of all the arrests that were made by police throughout the nation... 55% of those arrested were found to be under the age of 25. There have been various reports that juvenile delinquency is being combated successfully throughout America today. Progress has been made, but there is still much to be done. The number of persons under the age of 18 arrested in 1946 is greater than the number arrested in our last peacetime year, 1941. That fact constitutes a menace to you, the American people. Tonight's file opens in a trash-littered vacant lot near the crowded tenement district of a large Midwestern city. A young boy is idly playing in this lot as a second youth approaches. Hiya, Joe. Huh? Tommy. Wait a minute. What's your hurry? I ain't in no hurry, Tommy. What'd you try to run away for? I I was just getting up, that's all. Where you been all week? I been around. Not where I could see you. I looked for you, Tommy, honest. To pay me off? Yeah. Well, it ain't too late now. Let's have it. I... I spent it, Tommy. Don't give me that. Honest. You know what that means, don't you? Oh, no. No, wait, Tommy. Give me a chance, will you? (coughs) Get up. Please. Oh, Tommy, leave me alone. Get up, I said. No, Tommy, no. I guess I learned you not to run out on me. Wait, Tommy, I'll pay you. Now? No, just let me go home. I'll get the dough and bring it right back. Well, okay. But get back here fast. I will. Honest, I will. (laughs) Huh? Regular killer, ain't you? Quite a workout you gave him. What's it to you, mister? Oh, no, no. Save that for somebody your own size. What were you slugging him for? He didn't pay up. What do you mean? I charge him a dime a week for not hitting him. He was a week behind on his dues. He pays you for not hitting him? Yeah. All the kids in the neighborhood do. (laughs) That's quite a touch. Just one of my touches, mister. No kidding. What are some of your others? (laughs) Why should I spill them to you? I might be able to give you a few more you don't know about. Come on. Let's you and me go get a soda. (laughs) 
Mama. I'm in here. Oh. Hiya, honey. Where you been? Downtown. Doing what? Working. Wipe that pool chalk off your coat. I tell you, Norm, I was working. Yeah, I know, I know. You got a big deal. We make a big bundle. That's right. Well, please explain one thing to me, will you? What? You got a phone call right after you left here this morning. It was someone who sounded all of 16 years old, and he said he was your partner. Now, what's the rib? Well, uh, he ain't exactly my partner, but it wasn't a rib. What? I, uh, I, I got the kid working with me. What are you going to do? Hijack some bubble gum? Very funny. Just so happens I've lined up a real good score. <laughs> this I want to hear about. Okay. Now, here's a the setup. There's a couple of dozen crates of army binoculars stored in a little building down in the freight yard. Yeah. It's surplus stuff that they're selling to people. There's a real big demand for them now. Mm-hmm. Well, the building they're in can be entered by a little window at the back near the roof. A window that's just big enough for a kid to crawl through. Now, does it sound so funny? Where'd you get this kid? I picked him up just a few days ago. He's okay. What's the rest of the caper? I'm renting a truck. Back it right up to the building. The kid crawls through the window, then lets you in? That's right. What about the law? There's a watchman. I've got his movement time. We can load the truck and be out of there before he finishes his rounds. When do you and your little partner go into action? Tonight. Okay, mister. Nice going, Tommy. There's some crates piled up right inside the door. Good. I'll start loading them. You need any help? No, no, no. You, you stay here. Keep your eyes open. What's the matter with you, mister? What do you mean? You scared? You're kidding. You act that way. Ah, look, we're wasting time. i got to load those crates. Yeah. Hey, somebody's coming. What? I think it's a railroad deck. Oh, what do we do? You're running this, ain't you? Yeah, yeah. You Never go. mind. I'll handle it. Oh, wait a minute. Shh. Okay, mister. Now you can load on them crates. Special Agent Taylor speaking. Jim, this is Adams. Yes, sir. Detective Fulton from headquarters has just left my office. I'm sending him in to see you. Ken Fulton? That's right. I've assigned you to work on a case with him. Can I come in, Jim? Uh, he's here now, Mr. Adams. Good. I'll talk to you later. All right, sir. Hello, Ken. Hi, Jim. Good to see you. I'll pull up a chair. Thanks. I suppose you came over here to show me that Christmas tie. <laughs> well, that was one of the reasons. The other one's a robbery that took place last night down the freight yard. Oh, what's the story, Ken? Small warehouse was broken into. Mm -hmm. Ten cases of binoculars were stolen. A watchman was slugged. How does the FBI figure in the case? The binoculars were army property. I see. You got any leads? Well, the ground was soft in front of the warehouse. One of our lab men got a good impression of the tires of the truck that was used. You been down there yet? No, no, I was just been on the case myself. Oh. What about the watchman? Was he badly hurt? Well, he's in the city hospital. Did he see the thieves? He hasn't given too coherent a statement yet. He mentioned something about a kid being there. Uh -huh. That's about all. Well, Ken, how do you think we should work this one? Any way you say. Well, I suppose we divide up our activities and save some time, okay? Okay. Then why don't you go down to the warehouse and see what you can pick up there? I'll go out and interview that watchman at the city hospital. Norma. Mm. Norma. Um. Wake up, will you? you. How'd the job go? What do you care? What? Well, you didn't even stay awake to find out if it worked or not. Oh, look, I was up all night. If you'd had any consideration, you would have called. Oh, that would have been real smart. Maybe you wanted me to send you a wire, too. Robbery, a big success, stop all. You stop. Now, how'd it go? Okay. Tell me about it, will you? I knocked off ten cases of binoculars. That was all I could fit on a truck. How'd the kid work out? A little too good. 
What do you mean? He slugged the watchman. Bad? I don't know. Where's the kid now? I dropped him off at his house. Give him 20 bucks and told him I'd meet him this afternoon. What for? To give him his cut. Are you out of your mind cutting Look, a kid? Look, I got no intention of meeting him. I had all I wanted, that little guy. Well, what kept you so long? I had to get rid of the stuff. With a fence? Yeah. What'd you get for it? 3500 3500 Yeah. Oh, baby, you must be dead tired. Let me fix you a nice breakfast and put you to bed. You busy, Jim? Oh, hello, Ken. How'd you make out? I think I picked up a couple of pretty good clues. Oh, good. The thieves gained entry to the warehouse by climbing through a small window. Yeah. There was plenty of soot on that windowsill. Whoever climbed in managed to leave a set of excellent prints. <laughs> Very considerate of them. <laughs> I also picked up some shreds of wool that were caught in woodwork. Uh -huh. They uh, looked like they'd been torn from a sweater. What did you do with the evidence, Ken? Turned it over to Mr. Adams. He's sending it on to your laboratory. Oh, good. Say, how'd you make out? Well, I finally got to talk to the watchman. Give you anything? I think so, yes. So what about that kid he saw? Well, he just got a fleeting glimpse of him before he was slugged. By the kid? That's right. He said he'd seen him before, though. That he was one of the gang of youngsters that played around the freight yards once in a while. Did he know his name or where he lived? No, but he knows one of the other kids in the gang. He gave me his name and the school that he attends. Say, did the watchman give you anything on the truck? No. Did he see anyone else? No, the slugging occurred too quickly for him to see anything but the boy. And that kid becomes real important. That's right, Ken. Maybe you better go over there. Okay. And if I get anything that looks good, Ken, I'll call you at headquarters. Norma, what time is it? A little after two. In the afternoon. Yeah. Did you sleep well, honey? Yeah, yeah, fine. Can I get you anything? Uh, not... Right now, thanks. Well, if you need anything, dear, just let me know. <laughs> What's the joke? Uh, this new deal. I don't get it. From bum to king and one easy lesson. What are you talking about? That 3,500 sure made a big man out of me. Oh, no, honey, stop that talk. You know that it... W oh, that must be the delivery. What delivery? Well, while you were sleeping this morning, I went out. I bought a few things. Oh, like what? Dresses, some hats. Huh? Just wait till you see him. Okay, okay. Mr. Prentice live here? That's right, Sonny. Come right in. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Where's your packages? What are you talking about? I want to see Phil Prentice. Who's that, Norma? It's me, mister. Tommy Winfield. Huh? Tom hey, are you the little punk? Out of my way, lady. <laughs> Hiya, mister. What are you doing here? Came to find out why you didn't meet me. How'd you know where I lived? I tailed you here after the job. I uh, figured it would be a good idea to know where to find you, just in case. Phil, throw him out of here. Take it easy, lady. Come on, Junior. Out you go. Wait a minute. Look out, Phil. He's got a gun. That's right, lady. Where? Where'd you get that cap pistol? I bought it with the 20 bucks you gave me. Now, if you think it's a cap pistol, just make a bad move, and I uh, think you'll change your mind. Phil, take that gun away from him. Phil! He ain't got the nerve. He scares too easy. I seen that last night. Phil, do something. There's only one thing he can do. Give me my cut. I'm keeping his gun on both of you till I get it. We will return in just a moment to tonight's file, which shows how your FBI promotes security for the nation. Now, a word to fathers about security for the family. Father, how do you feel tonight? A little tired, eh? You've had a good dinner, you're contented, and don't want to be disturbed by anything. Well, if that's the way you feel, you'd better turn off your radio for the next 59 seconds because you are going to be disturbed by a question that's coming at you now. If I should die, how would my family get through the critical years until the youngest child finished high school? How long would my wife and children continue to be well-fed, well-housed, and well-clothed? That question is so important to your family's happiness 
that you ought to have an answer based not on guesses or hunches, but on facts. The Equitable Life Assurance Society will help you get these facts. It has prepared a special fact-facing chart for fathers that has these three advantages. First, it's simplicity itself. You can fill it out in five minutes flat. Second, you are guided every step of the way by easy-to-understand pictures which illustrate the unavoidable expenses your family will have to meet. Third, when you're finished with this fact-facing chart, you'll have a clear, accurate, and complete picture of just what income your family would need during the critical years. Say, Mr. Cross, that's something I really ought to know. Where can I get this fact-facing chart, and how much do they charge for it? Why, it doesn't cost a cent. The Equitable Society representative in your community will be glad to bring you a copy of this fact-facing chart. Phone him tomorrow or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Society. That's E-Q-U-I-T-A-B-L-E. The Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. And now, back to the FBI file, Little Tough Guy. In studying the problem of juvenile delinquency, one fact becomes apparent. Children, for the most part, are faithful imitators, and those who form the parade of delinquents are no exceptions. They are imitating their personal heroes, heroes who have gained temporary fame through crime. But the young people of America are not altogether to blame for having selected false idols. That is partly the fault of those who have daily contact with our young ones for they have not made decency and honesty sufficiently attractive. Children will imitate what seems most colorful to them, and for that reason the path to take is clear. When every child is taught that the policeman is more colorful than the criminal he catches, then and only then will juvenile delinquency cease to be a major problem. Tonight's file continues. Special Agent Jim Taylor, attempting to learn the identity of the boy involved in the warehouse robbery, is seated in the principal's office in a neighborhood school. A youngster enters. Is the principal here? No, but uh, come in, Joe. I was sent down to see the principal. I know. I sent for you. Who are you? Well, my name is Taylor. I'm the special agent of the FBI. Huh? I'd like to ask you a couple of questions, if I may. FBI? Joe, you play around the freight yards once in a while, don't you? Well, yeah. I'd like to find out about one of the boys in your gang. Uh Uh-huh. I'd say he's older than you are, about uh, 16. Has dark hair, always wears a yellow striped sweater. Oh, that's... That's who, Joe? Uh, I don't know. Now, look, you just started to tell me why did you change your mind. I didn't. I don't know who you mean. Joe, he's wanted for questioning on a very serious charge. If you know who he is, it's your duty to tell me. But I don't, honest. Are you afraid to tell? Leave me alone. Afraid of what people might think of you for doing your duty? No. No. Look, son, you you may not realize this, but you'd be doing that youngster a great service. You'd be saving him from greater trouble when he grows older. Now, don't be afraid of what you consider squealing, Joe. Now, come on. Let's have his name. Well, it it sounds like Tommy. Tommy who? Tommy Winfield. Do you know where he lives? No, but he goes to this school. Is he here today? No, he's absent. Well, Joe, you've been a great help to me. You should be very proud of what you've done. Thank you, son. Look, Tommy, how many times do I have to tell you the fence didn't pay me off yet? You're lying. I happen to know he's telling the truth. That ain't the way them things work. What do you know about selling stolen goods? I made a big study on all of them things. Where? In kindergarten? Never mind the wisecracks. I know more about larceny right now than that husband of yours does. Well, that I wouldn't brag about. I'm giving you one more chance to get that dough up. 
Otherwise, this gun goes off. Oh, look, kid, will you believe me? Wait a minute, Phil. Huh? You'd better pay him off. What? This kid really means business. Now, you're talking, lady. But, Norma... The dough's in a drawer in that desk. Which drawer? That top one there. This one here? Yeah, that's the one. Hey, I don't see any... Oh, oh. Now, drop that gun. Oh, my... Pick it up, Phil. Right. Oh. Oh. Now, Junior, we give the orders. It broke my hand. Oh, ain't that too bad. What'll we do to him? Let me think. I'm going to warn you right now. If anything happens to me, the cops will know who did it. What do you mean? Ah, he's throwing a blow. Oh. Now, look, uh, we're going to have to get out of town. This kid knows too much. Yeah. Huh? We'll tie him up in the bedroom. Oh. Then let's pack and get out of here. Fast. <laughs> Hi there, Jim. Oh, come on in, Ken. When'd you get back? About a half hour ago. Oh, I stopped by for you at headquarters. Left a message here. Yeah, yeah, I just got it. Do you have any luck? Yes. I've identified the boy we were looking for. Good for you. His name is Tommy Winfield. Where'd you get your information? From the other kid? That's right. Winfield attends the same school. Did you talk to him? No, he was absent today, but I've been able to definitely link him with a warehouse robbery. How? Well, this boy's been in trouble before. His prints are on file in your department. And you picked up a set? That's right. I have them right here. I've just finished comparing them with the set that you picked up on the windowsill. They're identical, all right. Did you get his home address? Yes, I'm going out there right now. Fulton speaking. Hello, Ken. Jim Taylor. Oh, hello, Jim. How'd you make out? Well, young Winfield wasn't at home, but I think I have a lead on where to pick him up. Good. Oh, by the way, I picked up a sweater that was on his bed. I think we'll find the wool will match the shreds you found on that windowsill. Fine. That ties that up. Yes. Well, I'm going out to look for him, Ken. I'll be in touch with you later. Okay. You all packed? Yeah. Yeah, well, let's go then. Is the kid tied up okay? Yeah, yeah, don't worry about him. Come on. Right. Go ahead. Oh, excuse me, please. Huh? Are you Mr. Brennis? What's that to you? I'm a special agent Taylor of the FBI. FBI? Oh, uh, well, uh, what can we do for you, sir? I'm looking for a youngster named Winfield. Tommy Winfield. Never heard of him. Oh? I found a note at his house that he'd written saying that if anything were to happen to him, you'd be responsible for it. Oh, why, that's the craziest thing I ever heard of. We don't know any Tommy Winfield. But nevertheless, his note did say he was coming here to your apartment. Would you mind terribly if I went inside and looked around? Oh, now, wait a minute. Phil, uh, uh, my husband was objecting be because we're in a hurry. You see, we got to catch a train. It would only take me a minute. Okay, okay, go ahead and look. We'll go on anyway. Come on, Norman. Oh, hold it, Mr. Prentice. Huh? I'd like you both to be here when I search the premises. Look, I told you we got to catch a train. Now get out of the way. I'm sorry, Mr. Prentice. Get away, I said. Phil, you fool. You know, Prentice, if I were you, I wouldn't start to play rough. Oh. Now, you might as well know that I have a search warrant here that I got just in case I ran into this kind of trouble. Now, get back in there, both of you. Okay. Phil. Oh, what else can we do? Just walk in front of him. We'll take a look around here. Wait a minute. What's in here? It's a closet. Well, was I right? Let's keep looking. Go ahead. Hold it. What's this door? It's another closet. Well, we'll take a look in there anyway. Now, keep out of there. Well. Uh, look, I, I can explain why the kid's in there. Run us. Untie this cage. He pulled a gun on us. Tried to stick us up. Yeah, sure, sure. That's what he did. Here, let me have it. Uh, help me. You gotta help me, please. You're Tommy Winfield? Yeah, that's right. Tommy, the little tough guy. Please huh? help me. Help me get out of here, please. You're just like the rest of them, Tommy. When the chips are down, you're not tough at all. <laughs> his complicity in the robbery, Tommy Winfield was sentenced to a state reformatory. Phil and Norma Prentice 
were both sentenced to long terms in a federal penitentiary. The number one problem confronting the Federal Bureau of Investigation and every other law enforcement agency in the nation today is juvenile delinquency. If the children of today are allowed to run free and to become the criminals of tomorrow, then America faces a dark future. But that need not be our fate. We are the captains of our own destiny if we will take control. Children of today are no different than they have ever been. But they cannot be allowed merely to grow up. They must be raised. They must be given the advantage of parental guidance. The problem of juvenile delinquency today is basically the problem of delinquent parents. For that reason, we especially urge you, the parents of America, to keep a closer watch on your children during 1947. And if you do, you can really make it a happy new year. In just a moment, we will tell you about next week's exciting case from the files of your FBI. But first, let me answer a question. When the breadwinner of a family dies, what are the critical years for his wife and children? The critical years are the years before the youngest child finishes high school, years in which the home must be kept together. To help you estimate just what income your family would need during those critical years, the Equitable Life Assurance Society has prepared a special fact-facing chart for fathers. Your Equitable Society representative will be glad to bring you a copy of this fact-facing chart. Phone him tomorrow or send a postcard care of this station to the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States. Next week, we will bring you another colorful story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, The Fugitive Guest. The incidents used in tonight's Equitable Life Assurance Society's broadcast are adapted from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. However, all names used are fictitious, and any similarity thereof to the names of persons living or dead is accidental. Tonight, the music was composed and conducted by Frederick Steiner. Your narrator was Dean Carlton. This is your FBI, is a Jerry Devine production. This is Milton Cross, speaking for the Equitable Life Assurance Society of the United States and the Equitable Society's representative in your community, and inviting you to tune in again next week at this same time when the Equitable Life Assurance Society will bring you another thrilling story from the files of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. The Fugitive Guest on This Is Your FBI. This is ABC the American Broadcasting Company.